to have a simple introduction between a flat file database and a relational database. There are two types of database you can come across. A flat file database, which you might be used to at school, in which you have one big table and lots of fields and lots of records. Another type of table that we will be working on in this assignment is a relational database. Many tables linked together. We're going to look at some of the differences between those now. In a flat file database, every time a pet has an appointment, such as this, all the information is typed in. However, this can cause us problems if we type all this information in every time that the pet comes to the vets. You can see how many field names there are, so this is going to be a pretty big database. It's going to take up a lot of time, and sometimes we'll duplicate data that we don't need. For example, once we have the owner's surname and address once, do we really need to type it in every time they visit the vets? This can also make data inconsistent or wrong, as it only takes a simple mistake, such as typing the town in wrong or the surname, for the database to become messy and difficult to analyse. We need to think about how we could break this down. If you look on the left, there are three main things that are going in this flat file database. There is information about the owner, there is information about the pet, and there is information about any appointments. You can see that from this, we can actually break it down into three tables. Let's have a look at what the advantages are of breaking it down into three tables rather than one big table, as we've just seen. Well, first of all, we don't need to enter data twice or more anymore. So once we have the information for the customer and their name and address, we don't need to get that anymore. So when the customers book an appointment, we already have that information and also the information about the dog. So we just need to book an appointment for them and it will link together. This reduces the data stored and it makes it a lot easier and smaller to view in terms of its size as everything is speeded up. It also reduces mistakes because once you put the information about the pet and the customer in one time, then you're unlikely to need to change that unless they move or the pet dies. So that will stay there all the time and it won't be altered so it will always be accurate. The main thing that this does is it reduces something called data redundancy. Data redundancy removes data that is unnecessary and this therefore makes our database run a lot smoother. Let's have a look at how the relational database works. Now it works by the use of keys. There are two types of key. We have a primary key. We've seen a primary key in a previous video. This is a unique number that helps you to tell each record apart. In the flat file database, the primary key would be the customer ID. A foreign key is the key that we use in a relational database. Now this is an important key as it's a key in another table that is a primary key in that, in that table, but we use that to link the tables together to create the relationship. Let's have a look what I mean. If you have a look at this, we have the customer table with the main primary key. Notice how this appears as a foreign key in the appointment table However, the appointment table still has a primary key. Again, pet is the primary key here, but is linked by a foreign key in the appointment table. When you work with relational databases, you will need to think very carefully about how to structure these tables. If you look at our example, we now have here a table for dogs, their breeds, and their owners. This is an example of a relational database since the original database was a flat file that looked like this. What happened were the people, the dogs and the breeds were all separated into separate tables. If you look here also we have some tables that are linked together by the primary key of one table to a foreign key in another table primary, foreign, 
primary foreign. So you can see how that works. To get to this view, to see the relationships, you merely click on database tools, which is here, relationships, and then it shows the relationships. We will learn later more about referential integrity and relationship types, but for now, that shows you how to develop the relationships.